Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, it's December 11th, 2022. I'm Jeff. And here we go. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. I've been determined length, episode number 675. And it's one of those times where we explore... A few of our favorite things. Nicely done. (laughs) So, uh, I would like to preface uh, something in in this show. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Slight preference. So, we've been talking about this for a little bit we had a document all made up so that we could start like throwing in the stuff that into our docs which we're gonna have in our show notes which you'll be able to access on our website comes out loud.com so you can get links to all these things and i realized something this year i don't want stuff like uh, i got an iphone 14 but because i was upgrading my phone and then that just happened to be after the iPhone 14 came out. <laughs> That's kind of it. And I'm like, I got nothing. I don't need anything think physical. So I had a little bit of a problem on this. So this is really a few of Damon and Gary's favorite things, but only because <laughs> Jeff didn't have anything. So there you have it. So what I just realized that we can't really represent and that should be on your list, Jeff, is what you would like is like a big like uh, Santa cosplay type person. It was just like Santa Claus. Yeah, or that. Uh, the, uh, um. Hmm. Not gonna do it. Nope. <laughs> We've already discussed this anyway. <laughs> In fact, we discussed it during last year's Jingle Mingle. Ooh. Speaking of, it's back. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. I don't have my bells. Damn That's it. okay. We're doing it again this year. That's right. See about Entourage Jingle Mingle 2. It's coming. Ah, oh, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. I, that was the first Jeff. thing that popped into my head. And I was like, I was I was going to say it. Nope, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. And then For most people, that's going to end up popping up. And there are some people who like go, ah, that's funny. Yeah, because they've heard it before. But they have no oh. idea where it originally came from. So, um, yeah, coming up uh, in a couple of weeks, Ooh. we're just going to do a fun little social gig online. We're going to play some games and be silly. We did it last year. Um, I'm putting together some new kind of gaming things. Uh, and the theme is naughty. Oh, nothing nice, apparently. Or maybe it's but naughty. Sometimes and being nice. naughty is being nice. Right. It's the nice kind of naughty. <laughs> it's the best kind of naughty. Mm. I'll naughty you to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh, and it's in my head. And it's in my head. And and there it is. There it is. 
Well, while Damon recovers, hey kids, you know what? It's the holiday season. It's the holiday season. Thank you, Damon. Once As again, you kind of can tell by the by <laughs> the backgrounds that we have. Uh, and, I got a Winter uh, Wonderland. Uh, uh, Damon's got the stockings, and uh, what is that? A gift wrapping table that's behind you, Gary. Baby, I am getting prepared to uh, make sure that the package is properly contained. Anyways, uh, so we as COL hosts are going to offer up some ideas for potential items to share or to gift a loved one. Mm -hmm. And that loved one, heck, could even be yourself. Yeah. So think of it as a precursor to what's inside Santa's sack. Mm. Not like that. Mm. Dirty bear cups. Big you just bad said bad naughty thing. like 10 bad minutes thing. ago. Oh, but, down, but that was about the jiggling. <laughs> <laughs> talking about well, an actual one of like... us. One of us has an item that y'all probably want want to get Santa to. Anyways, moving on. Anywho. <laughs> so yeah. Anyways, uh, we haven't ever done one of these, to my knowledge. We've never done a, a favorite kind of things like. You know, stuff that we enjoy that we like, you know, blah, blah, blah kind of deal. So, yeah. I've so we're going to. Before, like it may be not exactly like this, but in a similar yeah. sort of. We may have done something similar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So basically, uh, we have some items and uh, there are going to be links. But during the show, we're going to like show some of the items uh, in some visual things because we're going to, you know, talk about uh, these potential items and you know this it could be uh, an idea for you now to be fair because of when we're recording this and when this will air we are a couple of weeks away from the big ho ho holiday um if you are buying things for the thing called christmas um but if you also want to get things for other days you could uh you know check back and, and click on links and that kind of stuff um inventory question mark availability not sure <laughs> But we'll go from Noel there. Noel five thirty four. We did this, that, or other. This, that, or other useful holiday gifts. If you're as a kind of a reminder, and that was in twenty nineteen. Oh, okay. So it's been a couple. So of years similar, we, as I said. Yeah. Similar, not the same, yeah. but similar. Okay. So, uh, Damon, you're going first uh, with your items. And oh, okay. Jeff has a, a lovely visual to show people what these things are. Cool. Um, so my first thing in general, um, so as you know, I'm very much now into now, but into D and D and what is D and D if not a, uh, option to get like clicky clacky sparkly, uh, math rocks. Thank you for the ASMR. <laughs> I have my I have a have a little box here that I can Yeah. We go. Well I, I go with the traditional uh, D D nerd and use a crown oh, royal bag. That's that's just a box I take with me on gaming nights. I literally have a, a big bag in the in my office that is full of dice. But anyway so your first thing is the that uh the dice bag that the Laura Bailey dice bag that critical role yes. calls. I have that. I actually have that one. Ooh. That's the one I have up there. The Laura Bailey dice bag of holding or Bailey's dice bag of holding. Anyway, uh, with that being said, so these dice are from dice um, com, And these are the, um, I forget. I think they're called. How do you, I could probably look at the link and maybe figure that part out. Um, how do you want to do this? Yeah. How do you want to do this dice? Um, they're very pretty and purpley. And um, sparkly, and I, I I love them, um, and I love Dice Envy because their sets typically are these eleven piece sets. Not eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Ten piece sets. Excuse me, because it usually includes a big chunky um, um, D twenty, and then a smaller one, and then you get a couple of D sixes. And then you get your percentiles and a D8 and a D4 and a D12. But you get actually two D4s. You get, as you're looking at this picture here, you get a the traditional Caltrop D4. And then you get this little weird rounded D4, which actually is in here. I will like pull a out. Bar. Yeah, it's like a weird little bar. And I think they're just so fun. 
and neat. And I'll actually you can, pull like, one up. Like yeah. And... Yeah. You can, it rolls like a die because it's rounded. So that does help. And it is random. Like you will, like, like with any die, you'll get a one, two, three, or four. Uh, but I really like these. Uh, it, they're kind of fun. It's safer than the Caltrop. Right. This, if it falls on the floor, it might hurt your foot a little. Caltrop fall, the Caltrop D4 fall on the floor, stepping on it will hurt a lot because it's a point. Not a sharp point, but... The pyramid. Uh, mm-hmm. But um, I've been a fan of Dice Envy's dice. Um, I found them randomly, I'm thinking, last year, late last year. Um, and uh, have since bought... I've bought several sets from there. Um, they're just really fun. They have, they always have a weird design, usually within, not a weird design, they have different designs that come out every couple of months or so. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, they have a deal going on right now. I'll go to the site real quick. Come on, open for me. And then go to the web page. Um, oh, it's not here. Well, on Facebook, they have a mention of getting like 20% or 25% off if you let me see if if the algorithm will give me it really quickly in Facebook cuz I happen to have it open. Um but they have a little code that you can get like 20 25% off. Um I think it's like Santa or something at this point. Um nope, it's not going to be that way. Of course not cuz that would have been appropriate and perfect. Anyway, so there's that. Um, in any case, uh, make sure you have Honey installed when you go s- purchase it through the website. That way, they true. will probably search for the for promo code and see if it still works. Very true. Yes. Sorry. And no, we're not sponsored <laughs> by Honey. No. <laughs> as ironic well, as that would be, because it's a bear podcast. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maybe we need to do so, some solicitations. So speaking of dice, um, I'll move on to the next set. And this is actually a set I have. I actually have the, obviously I have these, I actually have everything here. But these are the um, retro arcade dice from dnddice.com. Um, obviously, as we were talking about before, playing D&D, um, these were... This, I believe, is the 11 or 12 piece set. Yeah. 11. 11 piece set. I think they call it 12 because you also get the little the um, coin. But um, in either case, the, this I saw again, algorithms, Facebook, it's a thing. You know it is. We all know it is. If you buy something somewhere and you're, you do certain searches, you're going to get stuff. So um, this became, I found this one through Facebook. And I saw these dice and immediately fell in love. Um, It's retro arcade. So it has this very like gamer, like video gamer thing, but is a video gaming callback to like, you know, my days when I was really playing games like in the 80s and 90s. Um, The set includes, should have done this before. It includes like four D6s. And then, like, the rest of the set, there with that, includes two D20s. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, if you look inside them, that's the thing that I enjoyed about most about these dice. They have fun little in, inclusions inside them, like um, like hearts and dots and, and glitter. Not really glitter in this one, per se, but it's like the big, thick glitter. And then... Uh, Again, it's a very retro themed. If you can, if you're looking at the picture, or if you go to the website, um, you'll see it has the the numbers look are very pixelated, um, and that I really enjoy. Um, and then you always get a with theirs, you get a coin, um, which I think is like a vinyl printed coin, and it says on it as I'm looking at it. Coin or like game poker chip type, type thing. Yeah, it's like a yeah. coin poker chip. Yeah. And it says on it, real gamers roll dice. And then it gives their website, which I thought was kind of fun. I mean, and is it, it enough that if you need a D2? 
Yeah. It's good for a D2. It's good like for it, Like it's got two different designs on it, like kind of a Correct. heads, tails. Cool. Yeah. So I, if I can, if it will work. There we go. So on one side, it says um, press start, and it has like a gamer controller. And if you turn it on the other side, it says game over, womp womp. And it has their, the D&D dice logo on it. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. And I have another set of theirs, but, and I just dropped one of the dice, and I'll have to pick that up. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yay. Fun, fun. Love them. Okay. Uh, nice. And next up uh, is, oh, okay. So you can blame Gary for this one. Um, not really a blame thing, but. Uh, uh, so Gary mentioned to me, because um, I had been talking a while about taking care of my skin. Um, I've been having issues here and there. And one of the problems I was dealing with was that I didn't really have something that could that work really well for my skin, um, being African American, what have you. Things would work, but not really. And he brought up this company called Bevel, that is black owned, and they have skincare. So I, on the fly, bought um, a couple of things from there, and love it. It, it does, it's not perfect, but um, this here is their essentials, skin essentials bundle. It includes a face wash, which I use. It includes a defoliating toner, like pads, and then a moisturizing face gel. And I've been using these products for a few months now, if not six months, I think. And I have noticed a difference in my skin um the flip of that is i wear a cpap machine a cpap and that's fairly new so i'm having what I, my main issue was i was having issues right around this area of my face because mm -hmm. the air is blowing in and your mask is on your face so it has really cleared up a lot of my skin issues on my face here and here and i do still get the occasional thing and i do have other products that I will use but for the sake of this I this has been a favorite and I'm really enjoying it so yeah yeah so, so to help explain to the the listening and viewing audience I listen to a well not recently I'm really backed up but I, I listen to a lot of podcasts and one of them uh, is based around talking to people who started their own business and like how that got started and all this stuff. And so they talked with the person who created Bevel, which I'd never heard of before. So I mentioned it to Damon. I was like, Hey, have you heard of this company before? Apparently it's like, you know, um, cosmetic, like health and, and wellness kind of skin topical things. And the, the guy was like, you know, we've got a problem. Like there really aren't products out there for African-American you know, individuals who get bumps and have problems, you know, with shaving and stuff. And so I just happened to mention it to Damon because I was like, it, a part of me was like, okay, I'm going to own my whiteness and be like, do I say something and seem <laughs> like I'm sticking my nose into something that isn't my business? And then what if he's never heard of it? Then like, I would feel kind of poopy as a friend and not like, <laughs> let him know and then he can make his own damn decision or whatever right. so um that's really kind of where that came about and right now they do have a sale that ends on december 19th that i think is 15 percent off uh site-wide but i'm happy and glad that that at least you know they're making an improvement for you so mm -hmm. yes and then next uh so we don't talk a lot about toasters um <laughs> <laughs> but and that's because I think most of us don't, we have a toaster and it works fine and, and it does what we need to do, but does mm -hmm. it really? So um, Jim and I, when we moved in together, I didn't have a toaster. He had one, but his was probably five, 10 years old when we moved in and it's been seven years since then. Mm -hmm. So um, it was okay. It got the job done, uh, but it was Showing its age, um, uneven toasting, things like that. And in addition, it was not very big. 
Um, okay. It was a two slice toaster. I mean, Jim lived by himself, like you know I did, so it made sense for him to have a two slice toaster. So this randomly showed up. I feel like either Prime Days. Actually, I'm thinking Prime Days on Amazon. And I was talking to Jim about it, and I was like, you know, we could upgrade because I don't know about you, sweetie, but sometimes I want to make big, you know, four pieces of toast or, you know, do things so I can have multiple slices or um, whatever. And he was like, sure, go get it. And so I did. So we got this toaster, um, the Elite Gourmet Long Slot Four Slice Toaster. Um, I, 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 again, I love it. We've only had it for a few, a couple of months now, but OMG, is it great? Um, the, it has six settings. It has, um, I haven't used the warming thing. Essentially it has on the sides. It has, you have another, you have two, um, red ledges, whatever, punchers. And on one, it's the toaster, but on the other side, it actually lifts this little electric, not electric, but metal grate up. And you could put things like croissants or danishes or whatever on top, and it'll warm them as well. So it doesn't toast them, but it warms them up. I haven't used it yet, but I, I love that, having that that utility. I have uh, to say, Damon, that's the one thing that like struck me out of all of its features, like it's, you know, mm -hmm. called a long slot toaster. Um, It's meant for wide items. And I think that's pretty cool. And I was like, wow, like, look at that. That's, you know, pretty fun. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but I mean, no offense, a a wide slot toaster has existed for a while, you know, because there's this thing called bagels. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, that's pretty neat. But the built-in warming rack mechanism intrigues me how it's got these little bars that just kind of boop, Come up <laughs> over top of the slots, and then, like it says, you heat up croissants, bagels, buns, other specialty breads. They have a picture of a croissant in a Danish, um, not to scale. And <laughs> <laughs> but I thought that was pretty neat. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I personally don't have a toaster because I'm not a big toast person. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I was probably going to toast anything, I'd probably make French toast, which is a whole mm. different. So, anyways, yes, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And again, it was, it just, it, when we got it, I immediately fell for it. It's sitting in our kitchen right now. We actually need to make a little room for it because it is a little big. Because obviously, four slices, long slots, it's, it gives you the dimensions on the site, but it's pretty good. You know, go for it. Check it out. Anyway. Neat. Um, Next up, speaking of Amazon, um, I when I got my new phone, my um, Samsung, um, I think S22 or whatever, whatever it is, um, the thing that was different from any phone I've had is it did not have an earphone jack or headphone mm-hmm. jack. Um, I've not had a phone like that before. You, tr- but you I trend knew- in phones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I was like, well, hell, what am I going to do? And I was like, well, the only option I have ultimately is like I need Bluetooth headphones. Um, And I searched um, Amazon and these came up, these Tozo Bluetooth earphones, earbuds. Um, They're relatively relatively cheap. Um, So keep that in mind (laughs) as I keep talking about it, but they are great for what I need them for. Mm -hmm. So let me explain. Maybe maybe Um, not an audio for people who are audiophiles or anything. Right. 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 Like, I just want to hear it. Yeah. Quality is not really much of a concern. Right. Well, and so, I mean, they're Bluetooth. They have a mic built in. It says Mm -hmm. they include deep bass. Um, Mm -hmm. rechargeable, uh, like ergonomic. I mean, you know, it's like, but I mean, yeah, I mean, if it wasn't that I was such an Apple person, um, (laughs) and I pay way more, uh, for my, um, AirPods, but yeah, no, I was like, it's cool to see these, 
you know, come mm-hmm. up. And actually right now on Amazon for me, I'm getting uh, their discounted off their list price and there's an additional 20% off coupon. So yeah. they are really trying to like move some yeah. of these, uh, you know, so, right now. Yeah. So to talk about, because I have to have them here, <laughs> they, the, the, um, charge lasts a long time for me. Um, I've noticed I've had them, I use them when I'm flying or, um, I've taken a couple of calls on them when I've been in the car with Jim and the earbud part is nice. And they gave you a little, like a few other little ones to kind of like adjust it. But, um, it fits really snugly and snugly in my ear and, um, it does what I need to do, which is allows me to listen to things on my phone. And if I need to, like, I actually can, I've paired them with my, this laptop, I've paired them with my Chromebook. Um, and they're just great. Um, I use them for calls, um, like, uh, zoom calls. Um, and again, it, uh, cause it has the microphone in it as well. So that was really right. Now as mentioning the main issues are, the range is not very long, like even though it's Bluetooth, it's not, you're not walking several feet away and still being able to get it. The, the, the connection will get choppy um, a lot faster than I thought it would. But that's, again, these are 20 something dollars. So right. you're getting what you pay for. Um, but again, the main thing for me is I can, I haven't, I've charged these maybe twice since I got them and I've used them several times in between. So well, that's you, kind of amazing. You haven't charged a case, right? Because well, you, char- you like you use them, then you put it in the case because the case yeah. is a charging case. So it's holding yeah. power. So, so right now, Oh, they're on. Uh Oh, come on. <laughs> I didn't mean to hit them. And now they turned on. And my worry is that it, okay. The Bluetooth is not on the phone. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Bluetooth isn't on on the computer because I was worried I was going to lose you because it was going to connect to the them. Anyway, that being said, um, yeah, I like them. They're good. They're good for what I need them for, and I appreciate them. Um, cool. Last kind of things, um, a couple of clothing items. Mm-hmm. Um, the from J.C. Penney. Um, uh. So I've, I've known about JCPenney forever. That's the, the place my mom used to shop. And every now and then I will get the occasional deal because um, I had to sign up for the email list because my mom doesn't have email. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and I will occasionally buy things. And this is one of the things I have bought recently. Um, they are um, St. John's Bay, big and tall, um, Men's long sleeve regular fit waffle Henley. I adore these shirts. Um, they're perfect for like right now when you want something that'll keep you warm but is not bulky. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I like them. Um, I've I've I actually wore this exact one today um, for um, a, a interview and it's perfect. It it works. It it's a good kind of semi casual, um, semi, yeah, like businessy casual kind of dress. Um, I've worn them to work, um, and when I've had to go into the office and everything. So I just really like them. Um, so much so that as I look at the site, I probably have, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of the colors. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Although I don't think one of them, I don't think one of them is from here. One of them may be from Amazon, but um, I, I like the cut. I like the look. Um, I like mm-hmm. the model in one of them a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, like, I mean, but I like their color varieties. Their their burgundy, this um, signature navy heather. This unfortunately it doesn't seem to be available bigger size Bombay heather. Like, it's this beautiful rust orange. Yes, I have that one. Kind of color. Are you um, sure it's not the model? 
No, that one in particular, I really love that color. It's not a color I think of for myself, but I'm pretty sure, Jeff, that's like one of the first shirts that you bought with our, our V3 logo. Uh, it kind of kind of, it was called Burnt Orange. Yeah. yeah but it, it's, it's the it, Longhorns colors. And yeah. Oh, but, and, oh, gosh, that's out of... Hey, sorry, and, I feel good because I got it. Right <laughs> now, JCPenney has 47% off and another like 30 percent off of that or something crazy like, yeah so that is where to be blunt a lot of why i tend to write a lot of stuff from here is i will they will almost always have a sale going on and in addition to that they will always have a coupon so yeah i can like i said like i have all of them and the main reason is because they were what is it now like these are sixteen seventy nine right now, um, with, right with the coupon. Yeah, they're but, they're regularly like forty six. It says. Yeah, so getting them for like that much off, I can get like three or four, and I know I'm going to wear them because I like them. So ta da! There you go. Yeah, it's um it's pretty cool. It's uh it says it's a regular fit, sixty percent cotton, forty percent recycled polyester considered a thermal like kind of fabric but yeah mm -hmm. i mean it's yeah and and again i've had them i've had several of them for a little while and i tend to wear them again like right around this time of the year when it's getting a little chilly and they're good like they're good to wear on their own yeah but they go well under a coat because it's not like a sweater and a you know right a, and they leg. and they go from large to 6xl mm-hmm which is pretty impressive as far as like sizes for, for this stuff. And we're talking like six XL America, not six XL Asian. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm not trying to be disparaging, but if you've ever bought anything from like wish or whatever. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that was not <laughs> <laughs> no. big, big boy, American size. You get it. Boy, you're American like, size. you're like, my thigh doesn't even fit this anyways. <laughs> Sorry. So with, Speaking of things I've bought a lot of and um, thoroughly enjoy, um, I'm a big fan of zip up hoodies. Um, mm -hmm. I they are my quick go to early fall like jacket. Sometimes if it's a little chilly, hi dude. Uh, mm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> David just, just noticed the image. bottle that I <laughs> picked for the product image. Uh, uh, but again, so these are from Fruit of the Loom. They're, it's on Amazon. It is a their ever soft full zip hoodie. Um, again, wow! I That's... really enjoy these. Um, um, I grabbed one because it matched my shirt. Kind of, it's a green. But they are they're soft, they're durable, um, and. Um, I'm a like again. I'm a big fan of a zip zip up hoodie, so I can throw it on, zip it up, walk out the door. Like I have, actually, all of them sit on our um, coat rack right near the front door. So mm -hmm. uh, when I need to head out or I'm stepping out to go grab something, depending on the weather, I can grab one really quick. And yeah, and, you and have the easy option of having it open. So like. Yeah. Keeps your arms warm and then maybe mm -hmm. it's not that cold. So right. Get it right, open. right, right. Exactly. Um interesting. There this is really reasonable pricing. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. for the loom. Yeah. Uh, yeah which I mean, it's not to say anything disparaging, but they're very right. much your your it's like next to generic, if you understand what I mean by that. And and I will add, um, so, and this is kind of kind of a negative. You're the like I like I told you I have several of them in different the same size. Mm -hmm. They do not all fit the same. Interesting. So to kind of put that in your mind, are they all the same full zip? Yes. Oh. So they're all the same. I think they're all this same like brand, like this exact thing. But um, Jim told me again, because Jim knows, because Jim does costuming stuff. Typically how they make a lot of these things is it, it's a mass produce production and they basically cut like 
the size of the fabric. They put a whole bunch of fabric down and then they just cut through it all. And then they get the pieces together and then they sew them together. So sometimes things that are, can't remember who was at the top or the bottom, maybe more in the bottom, may not be as thick as the right size as the ones at the top. Mm. So, okay. Again, um, but as Gary mentioned, they're not particularly expensive. Um, and then they'll go, so, they'll go to size, size larger. Yeah. Doesn't hurt. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a 60 cotton 40 poly mm-hmm. blend mix, uh, it seems, for most of the varieties. Like, so what, what we have that we're showing that the link is to is the full zip, but they also have a pullover, a quarter zip, and a sweatshirt, all the exact same thing if you're using this link um, at the the Bezos Evil Empire site. Um, <laughs> hey, I I just as guilty, uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And they go all the way from roughly small to four XL, and then they have like two XL, three XL, and four XL big. So they have like larger sizes, and then they also have like big as a as an additional option. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just realized that the chart that i have the visual of is not the big chart i didn't catch that um so but the big man chart like explains like chest size and um that kind of stuff and and i'm getting the impression they're calling them big but it might actually be more important in terms of tallness i'm not quite sure yeah yeah well comparatively speaking let's see two xb is oh no it does say in the bottom yeah yeah big and tall Extra room in waist and reshaped sleeves. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that's where the difference might lie. I'd have to look at them fully again. Oh, that's true. Because so like the regular version goes up to 4XL. And then the big and tall is called XB. And that goes up to 5. So right. that, that might have been the distinction, Damon, is if you got a regular version versus a big and tall, that's where you might see it seem weird. Because you're like, well, these are both 2X or 3X <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, exactly. I have to check that out when I look at the, I'll go look at them. Not right now, but. Right. Um, so. Um, oh, one yes. last thing. Yeah, um, this. This. <laughs> So I actually had to I actually had to replace this with something else um, because it's no longer available on the site. I have something similar, but this is kind of the thing. So um, this, this is the called, eighteen and older section, right? Was so it the new version that you've selected here, or this is the um, it's what's currently so, available. What's currently available? So. Um, I'll go back to 2020 <laughs> a little bit and, and, and um, Edward during his, like he had one of, one of our conversations about like self-pleasure and taking care of yourself and doing things for yourself. And that's where this kind of came in line. Um, finding toys and things for my own personal sexual pleasure. So with that being said, the, from Fort Croft, the Rev Cock, Robber. Um, it is a um, uh, it's essentially a vibrating cock ring. Um, but I'm pretty sure this one has several modes and and what have you, um, different vibration types, and um, this one does not have the remote. Um, no, this one does not have the remote. So again, um, you know, uh, to not get into really big details, um, you you put it on and turn it on and and go through the, the different things and have a good time and enjoy yourself. Or you can use it with someone else mm-hmm. and you both enjoy it together. Um, it's USB rechargeable. Mm-hmm. Comes in two sizes. Mm-hmm. For diameter. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. And it, you know, again, it's a matter of just like, enjoying yourself and, and and having a good time pleasuring with pleasure um nothing wrong with that wow yeah the one i have um is not this one um and i have it over here but i'm, I'm probably can i show it uh, yeah i can like i can show it my goodness Sorry. <laughs> this website, I'm like, it's got more oh. pain on it than my Twitter does. Yeah. Fort Have you Croft not been not... to Fort Troth before? 
No, I've never visited the website. Oh no, oh, my God! Even <laughs> I have. Apparently, I'm not having a life over here. <laughs> um, wow. So the one I actually have, which they, is no longer in stock, I have to. I'm just going to show you the box. FYI, if I show you the box, um, it is the Moto Vibe. Can you show? There you go. Um, sling cock ring. Um, hmm. I just spear. There we go. Uh, nope, there it goes. Okay. But this one is different. Um, it actually has, like, like I mentioned, it has a, it has a, um, uh, remote control. Gosh darn it. I was trying to find the words. Uh, but it is also used to be chargeable, rechargeable, and you can basically, instead of like hitting the button on the thing to make thing to change the nodes, you can actually hit the button on the, remote control to change it wow and this one also kind of because it is a sling cock ring it actually also goes around the balls so <laughs> this website yeah welcome to fort Trock, gary <laughs> well there anyways sorry i, I just had pretty... to I, I just had to click because there was a banner on the page when i clicked into it the complete oh. whole playground is here uh. Yeah. Six, yeah. six ways to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, Fort Trough is not shy. No, um, no not at all. And they have, and they have a wow. lot of things. Yeah. Um, PlayStation and... 1, the PlayStation 2, the PlayStation 3, <laughs> the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5. <laughs> they even have, believe it or not, a PlayStation 6. <laughs> and for you gamers out there, this is not for video yeah. game. No. Uh, uh, play and station have the space between them. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm sorry. The promo image for the PlayStation 3 is just kind of scary, disturbing. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I can see where you mean by that. That is an ass alt. <laughs> Like just just like that's just uh, so F Y I so for everyone as we're kind of like mentioning it um, this website even the link that is in the show notes is not safe for work no um, no absolutely no, no, not no no not no, at all just just don't no um, you might even want to be careful like putting it look, looking at it on your phone um, in the public uh, <laughs> so. Um, again, but those are things that I, particularly as we mentioned kind of this year, I have gotten, Gary, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm like the other site. This site just plays video. I mean, like, I have to click through to watch a thing like we were talking about a pre-show. This is just downright showing it all. <laughs> wow. I'm, okay. like, I'm looking at your face. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, but yeah, that's 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 my things for this year. Favorite things for this year. Um, okay. In, enjoy, Gary. Sorry, we'll <laughs> give you a second. <laughs> the diamond no, I, six I, comes complete. They did say complete with sling frame <laughs> mesh nylon sling with adjustable stirrups. Sling fuck machine mount, uh, convex mirror, lube and paper towel holder. That's convenient. Universal phone mount, military nylon carrying bag, fuck machine, adjustable fuck machine base, rim chair, rim pillow, rim fuck machine mount. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, not what was being recommended by Demon, but you know, while we were here, I haven't been to Fort Draw for a while, so I should check it out. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> a whole new world! <laughs> welcome, <laughs> welcome, Gary, to oh, the realm really? of Fort Trough. <laughs> I mean, I've heard of Fort Trough for years, but like, just like I've heard of Bad Dragon, I just don't pay attention. Like, I'm like, eh, whatever. Um, 
Al, maybe, maybe, maybe you found your new favorite thing. I don't know. <laughs> it's, all I know is like I'm uh, my butthole has puckered up and I just <laughs> oh, try it's to now clamp shut. Wholesomeness back <laughs> to the podcast. Bringing it back. Bringing it back. Bringing yeah. it back. And yet, the <laughs> so, first thing you have is you drinking the Kool Aid. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah. Well, I mean, and and honestly, so yeah, let's talk about it. Um, slowly over the years, I've become a bit of an Apple file, and so the Apple Air Tags are a newer thing. They're not revolutionary. There's lots of different versions of this product out on the market. Um, you know, Apple Air Tags happen to be this disc um, that you can buy that Bluetooth, you know, uh, tracks items. Uh, so most classically, you can put them on your keys. Um, I actually bought these before I went to Florida on vacation because I was concerned about my luggage. And I read and heard consistently people talking about their luggage kind of not being with them and that they would go to customer service for the airline and be like, my luggage is not here. Well, have you tried? No, no, no. Let me show you on my device. <laughs> I am in Germany and my luggage is in Paris. See? And I was like, wow, that sounds super fucking convenient. Mm -hmm. Like, especially if your CPAP is in your luggage because it doesn't fit in your carry on. Mm hmm. Like, and right. I'm only, and I'm only going one destination to another point. Like I'm, I, you know, one, one airport to another, I'm not like hopping or doing lots of different flights. So right. that was why I bought it. Um, I have, I bought, they came in a set when I got them. Um, and so I have them in a couple of places. I will say, uh, the notification becomes a little annoying after a while because like, I don't take my luggage with me to work. So the luggage quote unquote air tag like it keeps telling me every morning when I go to work you've left this behind yes I'm I, yeah, <laughs> I intended to thank you for telling me but in, incredibly useful and helpful um, mm -hmm. I have a couple of times misplaced something and been a little worried about where things are so I appreciate the find my fill in the blank feature that apple has um so you can do that between all your devices um i can do that with my after, airpods after like, having accidentally left my key in my car right right so it, it can be helpful you could put one of these in a vehicle technically um mm -hmm. you can hide it somewhere um in fact i left one at the airport intentionally in the long-term parking in my vehicle just in case Something mm. did happen, um, so I knew mm. where the hell my vehicle was. Um, so yeah, anyways, uh, th I will admit the Apple AirTag version is not exactly cheap. Um, no. but then again, it's Apple, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I, I have think like so... 99 bucks for a four pack, yeah. They come out to about 25 each, which I think mm -hmm. the going average is like 10 to 15 to 20, maybe. Yeah, um, so they're still on the more expensive kind of thing. side, but. Um, yeah. buying the Ford pack is not Cheaper. terrible. Yeah. I'm not, I'm yeah. not going to say it's great, but it's not terrible, but well, it also will... means that you're in the Apple environment though. Right. And I will admit, so the Apple thing that's interesting for those that may not know, and, and if you have Apple products is, so the Apple air tags actually work based on when they come into signal range of another Apple product. So right. it's not so much about your product, like your, let's say your cell phone or your iPad or whatever, your portable device. It's that anything that's nearby that has the same kind of frequency technology that pings, it doesn't have to be anything related like at all. And that's sort of what it goes off of. And, and that's a, a known advantage, but also a disadvantage because if for some reason your shit gets lost and it goes over the side of a ferry and it goes to the bottom of a lake, uh, you ain't going to get a signal because there's nothing down there to like tell it where it is. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not sonar, you know, satellite type of technology, right. stuff, but um, yeah. yeah. So, um, but I got the four pack because I was like, uh, do I just get one and like test it? And I was like, you know what? It's returnable. So I got the four and within like 36 to 48 hours, this is a couple weeks before travel. I was like, oh yeah, I'm so glad I bought four. And, and right. at first I only needed two. And then I started figuring out what I was going to do with them. Mm -hmm. Like, so I'll tell a quick little story, but there's, there's not the air tags, but it's tile. So it's a very similar product. Mm -hmm. 
um, a friend of ours um, got their car stolen mm. with their um, equipment inside. They're, they're a DJ. And they fortunately had their um, equipment with the, ta- um, the tile tag on it. Mm. And because of that, they reached out to everyone and asked people to, um, are because every anyone that has tile, like you mm-hmm. have it on your phone, the tile app or whatever, if you walk happen to walk past it or whatever, it'll ping um, your phone, and then you can kind of let someone know. So, mm-hmm. um, so I did that for them. I didn't find their don't get me wrong, I didn't find never found their car, but um, they did. They were able to successfully, through this, find the equipment that they had lost. Wow. Um, nice. Um, so, yeah. So, like, it's kind of a I, – I was thinking about it before um, we went to um, Florida, Gary, kind of like with you. Yeah. And I said, you know, never mind. Um, worst case scenario, I, I at that for Florida, I actually packed a carry on and uh, a bag. Uh, the carry, I, I took a carry on and also put in a um, check the bag. And I thought nothing of it um, because I carried on my um, CPAP machine. Mm. On the flight back, I decided to check both. And if you remember from mm-hmm. my pictures, um, this wouldn't have a tag, an air tag wouldn't have helped any of this, but my, my big carry on got damaged in mm-hmm. the, um, in the flight. So, um, I'm kind of a little, still a little myth about that, but I got it. I got it reconciled, but it was again, a, a moment where I thought about, wow, what would have happened if, you know, because probably the tile or tag or whatever could have been potentially damaged because it was kind of in there. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, rather interesting. I've I've been thinking about getting these because um, I like the idea of putting it in my luggage. Cause... Yeah. So I've known um, I've known both a photographer and a DJ who has had their stuff unfortunately stolen. Um, Mm -hmm. while they traveled and I think back on how this technology probably would have greatly helped them because you're talking about thousands and thousands of dollars of equipment like Mm -hmm. being taken Um, so oh and musicians I had to think about it I know at least one musician if not two that have had stuff like on tour like disappear or you know get taken or whatever and I mean and that is just super shitty um, to have that happen Mm -hmm. so yeah I mean I've had both of my two of my three vehicles that I've had um, the two I've had the longest both of them have been broken into at some point mm-hmm. and ransacked yeah. or whatever um, now the vehicles weren't taken but still it's, it's yeah. just so if you have anything of value I, I suggest you look into these type of devices and check it out um, and, and consider it just to be safe uh, so yeah next up um, speaking <laughs> of Florida I bought this because we were going to Florida so uh, this is a portable utensil set which might seem a little odd, um, but it's reusable. I love the fact that it's a whole set. It comes in its own carrier. Um, I actually bought one for Drew. It was Mm -hmm. a gift for him, and I had my own. And when we went to Epcot for the food and wine show, we had our own utensils that we could use the whole time we were traveling around the park and eating what felt like nonstop for about 10 <laughs> hours and and we're not having meals. We're literally stopping at all the different stations and like getting a little of this, a little of that. And, and we were kind of sharing stuff, but notably like I just didn't want to use a lot of plastic or mm-hmm. a lot of like disposable kind of cutlery stuff. And so I heard about this. This was recommended by um, the woman who, uh, has a YouTube channel that I follow that talks a lot about Disney. And she mentioned like, you know, getting your own thing. And I thought this was awesome. So it comes with uh, chopsticks, knife, fork, spoon, uh, and two types of straws. One's kind of like a boba straw. So it's a really big, fat, thick straw um, with a wide opening. And then the other one is a more of a standard one. And then it also comes with two brushes uh, for cleaning those said straws. And then it comes on its own pouch carrying case. They have multiple colors. Um, and it's really inexpensive. It's not that much. Um and so I 
loved it. And I know that Drew likes to go to um, food shows or food truck festivals, that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm like, it, it's easy. You put it in your back pocket or like, you know, in your hip pack or backpack or whatever. Um, I will warn you, because unfortunately this happened to me. If you're going to travel by airline, you should put this in your checked luggage. Because if you put it in your backpack, like I did for my return flight home, they will confiscate the knife. Oh, but just the knife. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that sucked. Well, you know, but uh, because it's a weapon, apparently. Whatever. I know. Technically, realistically, all of them could be. Uh, trust. I'm like, <laughs> with a chopstick, you could poke somebody's eye out. Anyways, uh, no, but I. So I thought this was pretty cool. I have no like preference of a of a company. I just really liked the set of nine pieces that Boomaco put together. Um, and you know, it's dishwasher safe. It comes in a waterproof lining pouch. It's just. Then they have yeah. you know, all sorts of fun colors and stuff. But I thought about it and I was like, this was probably one of my favorite things to get this year because I'm like, like Drew, if I go to like a food truck festival or like a local, like we have rib fest here where mm-hmm. I live every summer, like this is the perfect thing. Cause then you can just kind of grab it. And especially if you're doing a lot of different random kind of eating, you could take it to a family picnic, to a mm-hmm. potluck, a pitchin, you know, a right. casserole party, um, uh, superb owl is coming up, uh, <laughs> and you know, a month and a half or whatever. Like, and if you're the type of person that maybe, you know, doesn't know what other people's habits are for cleanliness, I'm not saying anything, but you know, if that's an issue for you, you could bring your own utensils. Um, and it doesn't have to be awkward or weird. Like, honestly, yeah. I was super impressed by this concept and I'm like, that is so yeah. original, well, but cool. So kind of on the flip of things, if you're someone like me who is kind of aggressive with their plastic cutlery and has broken things mm. often, yeah, um, this would be a great kind of, you know, you don't have to necessarily use, like you say, you don't have to use the plastic cutlery because you'll have something sturdy to right. use. Um, because I've been, I've been at, um, yeah, like I've gone out or gone to a place and gotten their like cutlery set or you know the plastic bag of cutlery things and like okay, like how am I cutting a steak with this? Right. Um, and and I will say that this particular set that I own that I also gifted to Drew is pretty good quality. Um, I, it's not flimsy. I don't feel like when you're using like a fork or the spoon that it's going to bend. Now, right. if it does bend, like one, uh, back up on your pressure. And two, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, I mean, what kind of, <laughs> if it's that damn tough, maybe you should knead it or just, you know, pick it up with your fingers. I don't know. Yeah. But no, it's really good quality. So um, I... I definitely uh, thought that that was a, a good item that I... So it has I, chopsticks, knife, fork, spoon, skewers, boba straw, and regular straw. Yeah, the, the two little the nice things... Little yeah, the two little things that have the little brushes at the end are meant to clean out the uh, uh, straws. The, sh- the straws. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't notice the brushes on these side. Yeah. 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 But, um... The chopsticks thing, I think, is just fucking awesome. Um, <laughs> well, because, I, like, I've been paying more and more attention as, like, I watch videos and stuff, how people, like, eat. And there's a couple of people that I, like, who are not of um, Asian, like, you know, ethnicity uh, or, you know, or race, but they, culture background, but they eat pretty frequently with chopsticks. And I'm like, mm-hmm. and chopsticks can help in a lot of situations if you don't have the other things. Mm-hmm. So Cheetos. Right. Popcorn. Right. 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 If you don't want to get your fingers dirty. So also I, I have, I've tried so many times to use chopsticks. I just can't use them. Yeah. I have, I'm going to, I'm the next time I have to deal it. with chopsticks, I'm going to try. There's a little hack where you like wrap a napkin around both ends and it kind of becomes kind of more like a tong. Mm-hmm. I want to try that. Because I am like you, Jeff. I do not. It. 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 I've never had the coordination to do, work. to do it. It doesn't. Eh, well, no. Whatever. I'll see. We'll see. I'm gonna give it. I'll give it a shot. I doubt it's gonna work because that's how I am. Moving on. But we'll have, we'll have a go. That's a we'll different a matter altogether. 
<laughs> All right. Um, next up, speaking of apparel, I too have a, a sweatshirt. Ooh. So there's a little story with this. Yeah. Um, this is called the District Refleece Crew. So the story with this is um, my part time job. I'm uh, back to the original client I was doing work with when I started with them. But for three years plus, uh, I worked with a different client and that client frequently gifted us things. And mm. one of the things I got was a hooded sweatshirt. It was it became my favorite sweatshirt ever um, outside of the ridiculous like honk and big green one that I got uh, like two years ago. But um, and. I was like, who makes this? Like, this thing's fucking amazing. Um, and it's this district company. I've never heard of them before. And this earlier this year, I was like, you know what? I want I want one of these, but it doesn't have to have a logo or anything on it. So because the client, you know, silk screened their stuff on it. And I mm -hmm. wanted to be able to wear something like it to work for casual, like, you know, when I'm not yeah. going to be doing anything with other people, like going out in public or whatever. So... Um, consequently, since then, I found them on Amazon and I bought two of these refleece crews. And the reason why they're called refleece is because it's 55% recycled cotton, 39% post consumer recycled polyester, and 6% recycled rayon. Ah. Um, so, like, the whole concept of this particular product line that District makes is that it's recycled material um that they have put together uh it only goes up to 4x but uh honestly i love it i'm wearing the um charcoal heather right now i own this one and the navy and uh i've i've honestly like if i ain't got nowhere and i ain't doing nothing like i'll wear this thing forever like <laughs> it's just i just like how it fits and it's comfortable it's got like the rib cuffs but it's not too tight um and because it's a, a mix cotton poly rayon like it doesn't really change shape hardly or do anything mm. um now don't nice. get me wrong like i love an all cotton like quote unquote pre-shrunk you know that bullshit <laughs> uh sweaty but i usually have to get them one or two sizes too bigger because i just know it's gonna shrink down right so and it is a little pricier um than like the fruit of the loom we were talking about earlier but you know i I just really, really like it. Um, and I wish they made more. Like, I, I would love it if they made, like, a... I haven't looked recently, but if they had, like, a Henley and some other stuff. But mm -hmm. I've been focusing on the the crew um, sweatshirt stuff. But So, nice. yeah, it was random. I never heard of them before. I got gifted this hoodie sweatshirt. Wore the fuck out of it last year in 21 into this year. And I was like, damn it, who is this company? I want to, like, get something else from them. So Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, next up. Um, so... <laughs> kind of funny uh story for me so if you have heard of oh my god i completely forgot their name so this stream yes thank you jeff um if you've heard of or and or have a soda stream i've gone through three of them um in my uh life in the past like decade or eight years or whatever since they came mm -hmm. on the scene um i like fizzy drinks i like carbonated beverages I've, I have a major pet peeve with Soda Stream, which is you have to carbonate just water and then you add your flavoring type stuff afterwards. And I watch a YouTube video uh, series, uh, Greg, from How to Drink. He's very cute. Um, yes, yes. And, <laughs> and he like uh, he's done a couple of different videos over the years about like kind of promoting products and different stuff. And Drinkmate is one of the things that he talks about because it allows you to carbonate more than just water now you can't carbonate everything but it gives you mm -hmm. way more options and so uh, about two months ago i splurged and i got the drink main omni fizz um and so i honestly i use this damn thing every day and i am not kidding like mm. and i bought a whole ton of um like those little uh, plastic, you know, kind of squirty bottles like Mio mm -hmm. or Crystal Light or other brands not mentioned here. None of them are sponsors. And <laughs> um, the thing I love is uh, now very popular are these individual powder stick mixes that you add to a 16.9 ounce bottled water. Now, mm -hmm. I will admit the smaller bottle, as in this image, is about 14 and a half ounces. It's not quite 16.9 um, mm -hmm. at the max. And then the bigger one is like 30, 
it's like 30 ounces or something. So it's not quite a one-to-one, like 16.9 for a bottled water, but, um, I've been doing that. So like, uh, as an excellent example, I love the Canada dry cranberry ginger ale. Mm -hmm. Um, while they do make a diet, it's not that often that I find it. And shit's expensive. Um, (laughs) So does pricey as fuck. So I end up finding they make it in a powder mix for like with bottled water, but I like the fizz. So Mm. what I've been doing is adding the powder to the, to the bottle Adding water, making sure it's dissolved, which doesn't usually take much. I find if the water is cold, it tends to clump a little. For mm-hmm. and then I just let it sit for a few minutes. But anyways, and then you put it into the you know device. Um, it's similar to a Soda Stream. It has a little bit of a different setup. I love that it allows you to release pressure. So like if you really want to carbonate something, um, nice. I didn't watch the instructions the first time, so almost. <laughs> well, I kind of made a mess. Um, because of the pressure in the bottle. But anyways, uh, then I properly learned how to like use the mechanism to release some of the, prof- the pressure in that. But guys, I love the shit out of this thing. Also, <laughs> like, like it's just, I've already gone through one uh, canister of CO2. Like I just, and they have a whole program. You can send and get a box and then you can get a label, a pre-shipped label to send back empty containers empty co2 containers and then they give you a discount on your next containers so huh. it's kind of like some of the um filter water companies will do that um mm-hmm. one i've had forever and ever and ever called zero water which i absolutely loved still to this day they do the same thing like you send them their used filters and they'll send you back a coupon for future ones um online or in store same thing uh, it appears that uh drink mate does so this allows nice. you to like do things. The only stipulation is a uh, pulp juice is really not preferred because the pulp causes issues. Mm. Um, so like if you're going to do like an orange juice, it needs to be like preferably no pulp orange, um, mm. that kind of stuff. But yeah. And then like that. orange juice. So. A, a drink with orange juice. Like I think they've got some sort of martini or something there. Sure. But yeah. orange juice in and of itself. Well, you'd be surprised because we're human species and we're dumb motherfuckers and we'll like try to do anything. So someone probably put chicken noodle soup in a bottle for all I know and try to carbonate it. So yeah, I'm still not a you. good idea. Well, fortunately, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the fizzy drinks. I don't care about the fizzy. Yeah. So, um, but no, I, I just really, really like it because my whole thing is, so this is what it comes down to. On a random time when I want to make a cocktail, One of the elements of making a mixed drink is probably a fizz element, whether it be tonic water, just plain old carbonated, you know, water, soda water, um, or something along those lines. And so like, like if I want to make a Moscow mule, I kind of need ginger ale or something. So I, this is where this was coming from is I want to be able to make something to order, quote unquote, instead of like going and buying shit and then being thirsty and drinking it. And then I don't have Mm -hmm. what I need for later. Right. This is this is part of that solution. Nice. So yeah. All right. Next up, uh, this is from Amazon. Actually, all of mine are linked to Amazon. But um, and this might seem kind of really <laughs> strange, but uh, I had to. I felt I needed to like recognize these. Um, these are sunglasses. There is nothing special about them. They are not prescription. <laughs> The one thing that is unique is that they have one version that's called a clear frame, non-polarized rainbow lens. Hmm. Now, I bought these way back in like May going into pride season because I wanted pride sunglasses because I was going to be going to some pride events. And I kind of wanted, you know, sunglasses that were sort of gay. Uh, (laughs) And there is a, a, a actual sunglass brand i can't think what the name of it is that came out with these cool um progressive pride uh side like the arms so it has like all the pride colors including like the brown the black the pink the white the blue like and and all that kind of jazz um on the arms and I, a couple of people locally had them but they were special order and then of course they sold out so these are what i ended up getting now here's why i i put them on my list I got so many compliments and questions about these Mm. exact glasses. And I was really shocked um, how many people 
complimented the glasses or asked me where I got them. And I was like, they're just sunglasses. <laughs> they're not that special. <laughs> well, and, they're, they're, the, and they're not that expensive. No. The the wording behind it, I like kind of like, because it mentions things like vintage and retro. Um, right. Um, they kind of have that, you know, older, not older, that sounds bad, um, vintage feel to them. But that's, you know, they're kind of fun looking. I will admit, I like I like them. I like I think they're cute. And they do see... have a rainbow striped version, meaning the frames are striped, not the lenses. Mm. Um, with a regular dark tint lens, and I didn't want that. I wanted something kind of fun. I also appreciate the fact that these particular ones, you can't see my eyes. So for the most part, you can't see where the hell I'm looking or what I'm staring at or whatever. So oh, just saying. Somebody trying to be discreet, like, hey, I'm the motherfucker in my teens or right into college. I bought those dumbass, like, side view sunglasses. Like, do you remember them things? They were like, <laughs> like beveled, mirrors, like right on this side or something like that. No, no, no. Like they were beveled. Like they didn't go this way. They went this way. So when you look to the very edges of the lenses, you could see to your sides behind you. Oh, God. It was like like your it was like your side mirrors on your on your vehicle. Oh, only, God. only like the inside of the lens was or the lenses were reflective on the outer edges and you could see basically it was like a mirror and you could see yeah, sort of like yeah. yeah. It was kind of it, it was it was like they look like regular like kind of futuristic black rim glasses. Anyways, so my dumb ass bought them a long time ago. So I've I've been known to buy some kooky things. So yeah. Uh, anyway, so I got a lot of compliments and people liked them. And I was like, all right, what the hell? I'll, I'll check it out. And then my last item, uh, <laughs> it's kind of random. And I actually just recently added it. Uh, I needed to buy a new wallet because my mm. my leather billfold that I've had for 15 years, a uh, long time, uh, it finally fell apart like it was dying. And I'm just a, I'm just a classic kind of guy that like I just need something to hold things. Mm -hmm. And so if you've watched anything on YouTube or listened to podcasts or whatever, you've probably heard about Ridge Wallet, which is this one famous brand that like kind of supposedly premiered this this version of a minimalist wallet. And uh, so I went looking online and I was going to buy a Ridge wallet until I saw the price. And I was like, I, I don't even hold that much cash in my wallet to buy one anyways. So, <laughs> uh, I found these, it's called mountain voyage minimalist wallets. Now the one that I got in particular that I really loved was walnut wood. Um, hmm. so the outside of the case is legitimately real wood. Um, hmm. And it does have like a billfold kind of extra money clip type deal. Um, it can hold a decent amount of cards. And yeah, I just, and I've had it ever since. I really, truly love it. I'm notably a person who never carries cash. Mm. So this was big to me because I can have like my ID. I can have my debit card. I could have a credit card. I can have my um, insurance information, my business card. Um, yeah, just a, a bunch of things. I will admit it's like, you know, kind of ridiculous how thick it is. Um, in a way, I mean, I'm not stressing it or breaking it, but I, it's probably one of the best, better investments in terms of just like for mm. my personal satisfaction that I've really liked. So if you're in the market for something like this, uh, I, you know, check it out, see if, if it's of interest. What's also interesting is, so it comes with these like, uh, seven little kind of black, flat screws that go in the sides for each piece they give you a tool and i think two or three of these spare screws mm. so if something should happen and you need to like replace one or, or whatever which i thought was pretty cool and interesting and if i remember correctly there's like i think it's a lifetime warranty or some crazy shit um they randomly send me an email every now and then uh and i'm like okay like i don't need it you know <laughs> uh, in that case but yeah so uh if if you're a person a wallet kind of person and you're looking um there's a lot of different uh versions 
available from different companies and you know um mm. so and i and it's funny because i'm looking at the price and i'm like i don't think i paid that much when i bought mine um <laughs> so I, must have got it on, on a deal or something maybe but it's fun looking i will give it that much i'm i am still like you i'm kind of i was kind of old school and the idea of a minimalist wallet is not my cup of tea right now but I do like this design as I'm kind of looking at this picture and looking at the video. It it it's it's rather intriguing. Um, I oh, will say this. Detachable. That's kind of fun. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's a good point, Damon. So that money clip is detachable. I never use it. Um, I will say this. I bought it knowing that it was returnable. Mm. With the intention of like, all right, I'm going to try it out for like a week or two. And if I hate it, I'm sending it back. Right. I, I, I'm not keeping it. I don't want to be locked mm-hmm. in on this. And uh, I've, I've honestly never looked back. I've, I've been very happy with it. So out of curiosity, mm-hmm. do you put it in your back pocket or do you carry it in one of your front pockets? Oh, good question. I have not carried a wallet in my back pocket since about 2001. Because... I don't understand. Shut <laughs> up, Siri. Good gravy. I didn't ask you to chime in. I don't understand. Why have you not carried a wallet in <laughs> since 2001? Well, because and maybe it was 2000. In about 1999, when I discovered the bear community and ended up joining the Berg Bears, one of the gentlemen that I was in lust with at the time, um, uh, he, I noticed we were at a bar function. It might have been in 99. It might, not have, it might not have been 2000. We were at a bar function. And I noticed that he pulled his wallet out of his front pocket. And I mean, it was thick. Like, it was mm-hmm. like two and a half inches thick. It was full of receipts mm. of shit. And I was just like, God, I was like, I should probably, <laughs> probably clean that out. But I must have had a weird look on my face because he noticed that I was staring at the fact that he pulled it out of his front pocket. And he said, what? And I said, you don't put your wallet in your back pocket? And he said, no, ever since my chiropractor told me it was causing problems, he's like, I quit putting it back there. He's like, because as you can see, I don't empty it that often. He's like, and the problem was I, when I was sitting on it, it was making me sit like kind of funky. He's <laughs> like, and it was causing problems. And my chiropractor was like, well, part of your problem is, is you've got this brick in your back pocket. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh-huh. And ever since he told me that, it really made an impression on me. And I'm not going to say right away, but probably within a couple of months or so, I was like, hmm, maybe I'll carry my wallet in my front pocket. And yeah. I have ever since. So nice. when, I, when I travel, when I'm in other cities, like the summer when I was in Chicago for the work conference, and I'm like, you know, riding the train or the subway, and I'm like around all sorts of people I don't know, I was mm-hmm. really concerned about someone picking my pocket because – like, it, would you have an easier time getting in my back pocket? Absolutely. But, baby, like, if you think you're going to reach into my front pocket, I'm probably going to notice and feel mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. I, I'm not going to go into that a little more, but maybe maybe post-show. Maybe post-show. Speaking of which. Yeah. So those are uh, my items for this particular year. And uh, who knows what will come in 2023 to mm-hmm. to purchase. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I had, I will admit if I, I did this list last week mm-hmm. and if I had like, I put a bunch of things down, I would have, I would have edited if I had known we were going to have more things on the list. Agreed. Like I probably would have edited. So and again, I don't want anything, although uh, because of certain things of me being like, oh, uh, I, I did find that there is a, uh, uh, I, I've decided I do want something, but I think it's one of those things where, you know, I just give me money and I'll get it myself whatever I wanted, want to sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. And just, yeah. just because I'm just going to throw this in here, here, uh, but uh, I found actually something I want, I'm going to. I'm going to actually add it to the list so that we have it because I'm going to talk about it. Um, (laughs) 
Hmm. Ah. Um, although, I, no, it might not actually. No, it's a desk mint. Hmm. <laughs> we're watching, so, so, FYI, we're watching him type this as we're, as he's talking about it. Certainly. So, so uh, it, yeah, and just because I pulled up, uh, because we were talking about wallets, and I, I've had this wallet for years, uh, which is a hoard leather bifold wallet. And uh, I went to Blizzard's uh, gear store to see if they like still had it or something. Uh, they mm. have a version which is very similar to this, but newer and the design's just a tad bit different. Mm. Um, it was made by Jinx. But while I was there, I also looked at these uh, gaming desk mats. It basically, yeah. it's like, you know how people have mouse pads? Well, this is basically a keyboard and mouse pad. <laughs> Yes. It goes across your desk. Uh, and the one that I'm going to link is their Dragonflight Gaming Desk Mac. Um, nice. Uh, which is the new expansion, which I've been enjoying. It's I've been very casually enjoying. Like, on occasion, I would break away from Final Fantasy fourteen and pop back into WoW and uh, do some dragon writing uh, and trying to level one of my 40 characters that I have. Don't ask. I'm not going to go into it. Um. <laughs> And I thought this design was very nice. So I and yeah. because if you've seen my current mouse pad, I probably need a new one. Yes. So yes. I thought, hey, this actually would be pretty cool to, to have. But you know what? I'm not gonna ask for it for Christmas because if I'm getting it, I'm just gonna get it myself. It's one of those things where I'm like, mm, I'm it, ready to just uh, pull the trigger right now. Yeah. Yeah, um, so annoying. to kind of, for me, like the reason, like my list in particular, these are all things I, I'm pretty sure I bought myself. Right. Like this, like this wasn't like, um, oh, here's a Christmas gift, blah, blah, blah kind of thing. These were all things that I have purchased and used and enjoyed. Um, and with that said, like, I'm kind of like you, Jeff, right now, because Jim and I have been talking about Christmas um, and with his family, because we're, you know, they always do gifts and things. And I was like, we both kind of were like, we don't really need anything. Well, um, well, money, right. I mean, gift I think, cards, that's pretty yeah. much that. Right. I think that's we're all, all of the same age, like that where mm -hmm. we, we like we can get whatever we want or need mm -hmm. where it's much different. I know when I was in my 20s into my 30s, I was like, like, I need this. I need this. I need this. Like, I like mm -hmm. it was much easier to come up with a list of things yeah. because it was stuff that you hadn't accrued or acquired or been gifted or whatever yet. Yeah. Um, but this is an excellent idea. Like, um, I imagine a lot of different gaming like franchises have these. But Blizzard has a series of these um, desk mats. Um, I have one that's L shaped that's on my desk specifically because I have an, uh, an L shaped desk, but yeah, it's, it's pretty convenient to have a like kind of padded surface that you can do things on. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they're, these are reasonable price, uh, yeah. you know? So I think this would be an excellent, something that people could give to a gamer in their life, or you could tell your family, um, this is something <laughs> they could get for you. And then ta-da, like now you have one. Yeah, the, the year the year that I asked for mostly uh, uh, things that I needed, like I needed a new my my big my winter jacket, which I absolutely adore. The only thing is, I'm a little, little thicker around the middle than my jacket really prefers, so I mm -hmm. needed a bigger jacket. So I asked for a jacket, and did I get a jacket? No, I got a <laughs> they get an inherited rain jacket that I got from my. Uh, um, uh, uncle recently he passed last year which oh. don't get me wrong it's nice i didn't actually have just a rain jacket um nice so it was nice to have so i appreciated that but then what else did what? i get i got cups that i don't think i've used in i think i used it once just because i had it uh, <laughs> and honestly it was like how do i nicely say I don't Please want don't this. do this again. I'm like, I appreciate yeah. it, like, but yeah, I don't need this. Yeah. I have nothing to do with it. I didn't even ask for it. If you don't right. know, honestly, I think the best way to to give something somebody something 
when you don't know what to give them or what they ask for or something out of your price range or something, give them a twenty dollar gift card to Amazon or a, a, a gas card or just give them twenty bucks. You know, sometimes yeah. just give them money so they can buy their own shit. Our listen to a podcast give you some wonderful ideas of gift giving for your holiday season. Yeah. Ding. There you go. If you think somebody would totally totally appreciate a fork trough bread <laughs> cock throbber, there you go. We'll have a link in the show notes. <laughs> Buy it. Which <laughs> because it's that this in the end. I don't think uh oh, would be any appropriate for this. <laughs> I think it's more thank uh. God. <laughs> uh, but you can find all these links on our show notes on cubs.law.com where you can leave a comment there on the blog. Uh, if you have any uh, recommendations for us, you can shoot us an email at cubs.law at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 361 puck. Uh, that's 361-265-8255, which we might lose here if nobody calls. Soon. ASAP, like less than maybe 15 days. Um, I have faith in our entourage. Every year when we talk about this, somebody calls, leaves us a lovely message. Yeah, can somebody call and leave this message? Thank you. Um, uh, you can find us on various social media outlets such as Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. We are there, but I'm not sure how much is there. Um, <laughs> and YouTube, at comes out loud, the appropriate place of the URL. And yes, we are still on Twitter because... Twitter, as far as I can tell, nothing has changed. At least from my point of view. <laughs> Knock on wood, yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to chat with us directly, you can do that over on our Entourage chat, which you, uh, on Telegram, uh, which you can quickly access at tinyurlcom slash telegram dash col. If you would like to know when we're planning on recording these shows, including the Jingle Mingle later this month, uh, you can find that out at tinyurlcom slash calendar dash col. If you like it to get various sacrament, maybe that's a present you want to get, such as a Consent is My Foreplay shirt, or a Cubs Out Loud logo shirt, or a Cubs Out Loud logo hat, or a mug, or something. Just make sure that they actually have room for a mug, and they don't have like 50 mugs already, that they don't need another mug. Maybe ask them before you do that. Or you could get them a Zazzle gift card, which they can then spend to get whatever they want over at Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, some of those designs, such as the original Consent of My Foreplay design, uh, was designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at thepublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. This is part of the way we're actually paying him for that, by the way. We appreciate him by wanting to support him. And you can support us also by, by becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud, or so you can send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on various social media platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, and uh, Amazon and Audible. It, it's good to rate us and review us there to get us a boost in the algorithm and get more people to, to find us and, and, and watch us or listen to us. Give us five stars like the one behind Gary. <laughs> well, there's one star behind Gary, but so. Well. No, <laughs> probably a good idea, Gary. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, there we go. <laughs> I'll get there eventually. <laughs> you can find me anywhere on the internet as Box Up Box, Puppy Box, Gum Box, something or other, or Windjump W Y N D G E M on Twitch, where we're uh, by um, one or two more sessions, we'll be wrapping up uh, the Bears and Dragon show uh, with this uh, part of the uh, Out of the Abyss campaign. Now we got a good stopping point, and one of our players is leaving, and I don't feel like finding somebody else. So, <laughs> Damon, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as Theater Cup Seven Nine. That's T H E A T R E C U B Seven Nine. On most bear related sites, are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, say good night, everybody! Good night, everybody! Have a good one, y'all! Go!